In this video we're going to examine the solution to a second order system. I find that when you're first starting out solving these it's very useful to create a little cheat sheet to kind of help you keep all of the information that you need about second order differential equations uh, in one convenient spot. This is the cheat sheet that I've created and uh, you can pause the video and take a look at it. If you use it to solve a dozen or more problems you'll find that a lot of this stuff you kind of end up memorizing just from using it so frequently. We'll come back to it uh, throughout the video. Okay, so here we have a circuit and we know that it's a second order system. We know that it's a second order circuit because it has two energy storage devices. Okay, and we're further tipped off to this being a uh, circuit that's going to require some sort of differential equation because of the quantum event when the switch is flipped open here. So our ultimate solution is going to be to find an equation that describes the current I of t at all points greater than t equals zero. When you're solving these circuits, this is the algorithm that I use first I'll determine the initial conditions. The initial conditions uh, are the current through the inductor at t equals zero, the voltage across the capacitor at t equals zero, the variable that you're solving for, in this case I of t, at t equals zero plus, and the, uh, the terminal value of that uh, parameter that you're looking for, so I at infinity. Notice that I don't care about uh, whether I'm saying I, the current through the inductor at zero minus or zero plus, or the voltage across the capacitor at uh, zero minus or zero plus, because the energy in a capacitor and inductor cannot change instantaneously. So those values will be the same before the quantum event and just after the quantum event. Uh, second, we'll write an equation to describe the circuit. If we have a second order circuit like this one, we are guaranteed to have a second order differential equation. We're going to write that differential equation in standard form and use that to extract the characteristic equation characteristic equation will give us all of these variables. We'll use these variables to solve the rest of the circuit and the case is going to give us the general equation. In my cheat sheet I have a general equation written for each of the cases. Here it is here, here it is here, uh, so on and so forth. We're going to use that general equation and the derivative of that general equation to solve the circuit. And it works like this. Um, the general, we'll be able to solve the general equation with one of those initial conditions uh, that's on the energy, one of the energy storage device. Then we'll be able to use the derivative of the general solution uh, and the initial condition on the other energy storage device to come up with some way to generate a solution to that. Uh, finally, that's going to leave us with two equations, two unknowns, and we'll solve that system of linear equations using any method that we like. So we begin by determining the initial conditions. What are those initial conditions? Well, we need to find I at the moment after the quantum event, uh, the current through the inductor, the voltage across the capacitor, and the terminal condition for the parameter that we're looking for, I at infinity in this case. Uh, let's go ahead and also recognize right off the bat that I uh, I naught or I of t is the same as I of L. 
So once we found one, we found the other. In this particular circuit, that's going to make things a little bit simplified for us. <clears throat> OK, so we have our circuit here, and we want to imagine that it was invented you know, a million years ago. And it's just been sitting around here existing. And uh, right before t equals 0, it's been doing its thing for a long time. And that means that the inductor is treated like a short, and the capacitor is treated like an open. So we can just redraw our circuit like this as a short, and we can imagine the capacitor as being open. So uh, because the capacitor is open, there's no current flowing through this 5 ohm resistor here no current flowing through the capacitor and so uh, at the point right before the switch is flipped the only thing that we have is this single KVL loop to look at okay and uh, so we can write a little KVL equation and determine what I L is so it's going to be starting from uh, right here we get minus 20 uh, combine the two resistors and use the passive sign convention plus 10 I L minus 10 equals 0 and that will tell you that I L equals 3 and that is at the moment that the before the switch is flipped now we know that the current through an inductor cannot change instantly so the current through the inductor before just before and just after stays the same and that's three now we know that because the current through the inductor at I at zero plus is three amps that the current I of T at 0 plus is also 3 amps. Okay, uh, Don't get confused by this. That works nicely in this circuit. It, it won't always work like that. Remember that I of T could change instantly. The voltage across a resistor and the, volta and the current through a resistor um, are bound by Ohm's law and therefore they can change instantaneously. Um, this is just a happy coincidence. Okay, the next thing that we want to do is determine what is the voltage that accumulates on the capacitor. And that's, uh, we know that there's a voltage accumulated on the capacitor because that's what causes it to act like an open. And we can simply solve that by assigning a V of C like this and doing a KVL equation. Notice that there is no current through this 5 ohm resistor so we're really just looking at V of C equaling the voltage drop across the 10 volt and the 5 ohm uh, resistor. So that's 10 plus 5 um, I L plus V C equals zero. Now be careful when you do this. My I L right here is going in this direction. So I've actually have not followed the passivity rule here. This should be a minus. Okay, and so, and we know uh, IL is 3, so this is 10 uh, minus 15, and so V of C equals 5 right before and right after the quantum event when the switch is flipped. Okay, and just to keep that in my memory, I want to make sure that I follow that polarity all the way through my problem so that I get the uh, proper 
signs on my later equations. Okay, so now imagine that the switch is flipped open. When the switch is flipped open at t, now we want to know what happens an infinity of time later. Well, we've broken this entire connection of the circuit so it doesn't do anything. And we um, only have this loop. So the capacitor, which had a bunch of charge on it, starts to discharge. And this battery causes the capacitor to charge. Uh, incidentally, uh, if you look at it, you'll see that the charge that on the capacitor will actually flip its sign from the way that we've assigned it here. Um, and what ends up happening is that the capacitor gets fully charged so that no current flows through it. No current flows through it, meaning that I of t at infinity is actually zero volts. I'm sorry, zero amps. Okay, so those are our initial conditions. The next thing that we want to do is determine what our characteristic equation is. To do this, we're going to um, write an equation to describe the circuit uh, after the switch has been flipped. This is going to be a second order differential equation that we will uh, write in standard form. And you can look at the circuit and see that when the switch is flipped, we simply have an RCL uh, in series with a voltage source. And you can look that up in the book if you want. However, you'll be better served to practice writing these equations by looking at the circuit because uh, we have uh, in our book a quick reference for series and parallel RCL circuits, but not all second order circuits are going to be series and parallel. So let's go through the process of writing the equation for this particular circuit. And this one's easy. The, we have a single loop, so it makes sense to do a, a KVL equation. Uh, sometimes they'll be more complicated. Uh, we'll begin by examining KVL in that loop right there. And actually what I'll do is uh, I'm going to draw the loop the other way just to make it a little bit easier on myself because then uh, I of T, uh, my, cur my KVL mesh loop is going in the same direction as my uh, I of T. So we'll start at the battery. It's going to be minus 10. And now we're going to go through the capacitor. The capacitor, uh, remember the equation is uh, I equals uh, C dV dt. But we want to write this in terms of the voltage. So that's going to be, uh, we're entering the negative terminal, minus 1 over C integral of I dt. Now pay attention here. It's easy to get confused by this. This equation, this part right here is assuming some current I. We need to obey the passivity rule and according to the polarity that we've assigned we do not obey the passivity rule if we're going to use I of t as our current or the mesh current. So this is going to be minus i. Okay? And the minus and the minus will make this a plus. Okay? And then I'll combine the two resistors. Uh, and I'm just going to leave the I'm going to use symbolic values for now. So this is going to be r times i. And then uh, finally plus l di dt and all of that equals zero. So now I want to write this in standard form. We don't want to deal with the integral, so we're going to take the derivative of everything. So we get, um, uh, and I'm going to uh, rearrange this as I go. So here's my, I'm going to take the derivative of this and that's going to be my second order term. 
and that's so that's going to be di d squared i dt squared. And I'm going to divide by L to put it in standard form. I'm going to divide everything through by L um, as I go. This is going to be my second order term, so that's going to be R over L di dt. And then this is going to be 1 over CL i. And then the derivative of 10 is 0. So that's just 0. Okay. So from this, we can extract the characteristic equation that says s squared plus r over l. Oops, that's a plus there. Pl uh, s plus 1 over cl equals 0. <clears throat> Keep in mind uh, on the cheat sheet here. Uh, that our characteristic equation is given by this. So we can solve now for sigma and omega. Sigma equals r over 2l. And if we plug in our actual values for that, you'll see that it equals 5. Omega naught equals 1 over the square root of CL. If you look back at that uh, characteristic equation, you'll see why that becomes 1 over the square root of CL, because uh, the ter this term is equal to omega squared. Okay, And so that also uh, happens to equal 5. Right after I've solved for omega and sigma, I write the inequality. In this case, sigma equals omega naught. And this means that the circuit is critically damped. Okay, what does that mean? Well, uh, that means that it's going to be case 3, where sigma equals omega naught. Critically damped if we were to look at a graph uh, of the uh, particular characteristic that we're looking for, it would look like one of these three different uh, lines. We know uh, our s values are given. And how did we get these s values? Uh, we used the original um, quadratic equation to solve for them. This is a simplified version of that that you can use to make things a little bit quicker but notice that if sigma and omega are not uh, and omega not are z both the same that this whole term just goes to zero and so s just equals minus sigma and finally we have our characteristic equation right here so I'm sorry our um, general the general form of our equation there's notice that there are two unknowns we know sigma uh, we presumably know x at infinity, and we just need to solve for b1 and b2. So let's write down our characteristic equation and move on to the next step. I'm sorry, our general equation and move on to the next step. So our general equation is going to be b1 e to the minus sigma t plus b2 t e to the minus sigma t plus x at infinity. Okay, And every part of our circuit will follow this general equation. At this point, we're looking for the particular solution uh, uh, of i of t. So we want to use this general equation, but we want to write it in terms of what it is that we're looking for here. So I'm just rewriting this where x is i, and I'm also going to place in my sigma i of t. 
equals b1 e to the minus 5t plus b2 e to the minus 5t. And x at infinity is i at infinity, which we already solved to be 0. So that is our equation. Now what we want to do is using one of the energy storage using one of the initial conditions of the energy storage device <clears throat> one of the energy storage devices we want to solve this equation so we know from our initial conditions we were able to use I of L the current through the inductor to tell us what I of T at 0 plus was equal to. So what we're going to do now is use that to fill in the blanks here. This is I, this says that I of 0 equals 3 amps and that's equal to B1 E to the minus 5 times 0 plus B2 times 0 times e to the minus 5 times 0. And so that tells us that b1 equals 3. Now the next thing that we need to do is we need to take the derivative of our general solution and look for a way to relate that to what we know about the circuit. So uh, I'm going to write it right here, di dt. So I'm just taking this equation right here and rewriting uh, and writing its derivative. di dt equals minus 5b1 e to the minus 5t plus b2 e to the minus 5t minus b2 uh, let's do it like this minus 5 b2 t e to the minus 5 t. So uh, let's see what we did before was we used the current we used what we knew about the initial conditions of the current through the inductor to inform our uh, first equation so we're going to use the voltage on the capacitor to help us figure out what's going on in the second equation. And uh, what we can do is redraw or re-examine this circuit knowing that this voltage right here is equal to 5 volts. Okay, how is that going to help me? Well, um, it turns out that uh, when I look at this equation, I can write a mesh equation here and we'll put the inductor back in. Okay, because we're looking at an equation for all time after t equals zero, so we can't treat the inductor and the capacitor as shorts. At the instant the switch is flipped, they act like an inductor and a capacitor. So I can write a KVL equation uh, for that loop, and I'll do that right here. Uh, we get it's kind of hard to do without looking at it, right? We get uh, minus ten, minus five. And then we get. Uh, 10 IL following the passivity rule and we have to follow the passivity rule with the um, inductor as well and that's L di dt and all of that equals zero so look at that uh, we now have an equation you plugging in what we knew about the initial conditions on the capacitor 
we were able to write an equation that gave us something with di dt in it. Okay? And if you um, uh, if you uh, solve this, you'll see that di dt equals minus 15. Okay, so now we can look at, and this is at the moment t equals 0. So recall then, I should have been more explicit here, this is the function of t. So di dt at 0 equals minus 15, which is equal to, uh, we know this is, we know b1 is 3, right? So this is just um, minus 15. And b1 e to the minus 5t, I'm sorry, e to the minus 5t just becomes times 1. Okay, so that's times 1 b2 uh, e to the minus 5t is simply b2 and minus 5 b2t all of this is 0 because of this t right here and so what you end up with is this equation right here and when you bring the 15 over, you find out that b2, in fact, equals 0. Okay, So in summation now, we'll bring all that together and write our final equation. The final equation is 3, sorry, i of t equals 3e to the minus 5t amps for t greater than 0. And that's our final solution. Okay? Good luck.